lasagna. I think lasagna is the best looking Italian food. So are you going to tell the people? I mean, I don't really, I wasn't actually going to bring it up, but I can, I suppose. Uh, Yeah, dude, of course. I want to hear all about it. I haven't gotten the details, nothing. Simple answer is I I tore the uh, lowest muscle in your back. What's even worse about it was uh, I was, (laughs) man, that's embarrassing. Uh, yeah, that's why I wanted to ask you about it, right? Let, let's get to the point where we find out how you did here, it. Let, let me preface it with one thing. So here's what's the worst part about this whole situation. I've been going back to the gym after like eight years of not going. I've dropped a little weight. I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. And I, I'm, out, I'm out in the yard getting it ready for my kid's birthday party. And I'm picking up dog shit. But I go to pick up the bucket with the poop in it. And that was it. I feel like it's been enough days where I can now approach this as being funny. That may Absolutely. not may not be the case for you. But so you tore a muscle in your back. How much dog poop was in the bucket? It was a full bucket, but it wasn't like wasn't heavy at all. I mean, I had mowed the lawn before, but the front lawn before that, like I had helped my my father in law was in town, which made it a little worse. But like I was helping him do a couple of oh, things. Oh, he thinks you're weak now. <laughs> now no, he thinks I, you're weak. Now he's looking at you like this is the man that married my daughter. <laughs> Tore his back, picking up two and a half pounds of dog poop. So probably the most uncomfortable part of all of this. So I get to the ER. You know, I go into the the non trauma bay or whatever of the ER, and a doctor comes right in. By the way, shout out to Beaumont Hospital here in in, in Southeast Michigan. They were fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I okay. I get on a gurney and the doctor comes in. And um, I'm on, I'm on, I'm facing the wall, so like I can't really see her. But my wife is there with me, which makes it even worse. And I, I look at my wife's face, and like she's kind of about, to, she's getting ghost faced, right? She's getting like, what is happening? And then I hear the doctor go, "All right, sir, I'm just going to give you a quick rectal exam to make sure that you can still, you know, that you haven't lost control of your butt muscles." <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, uh, from somebody that <laughs> that. That hasn't had fingers up his butt very often. Oh, uh, they went up the butt, huh? No, no. I, I rolled over, and I was like, I don't need that. I'm fine. So, like, I kind of pulled down my pants, and I, sh- I showed her I could, like, clench my ass cheeks. And then she goes, well, all right, roll, roll over the other way. I want to make sure that the other part works, too. Because at that point, they didn't know if it was a slip disc or, like, maybe if I'd maybe even broken something. Uh, and I guess they were trying to see, but uh, I was like, no. The front and the back is fine. Uh, you do not need to touch anything. First of all, that's hilarious. Second of all, just let the doctor do their job, man. You know how many no. fingers a do- they probably had up? Like, think of how many times a doctor has put their fingers up somebody's butt. Like, they don't care, yeah. man. Yeah, no. Well, guess what? This doctor, she didn't get to put her fingers up my butt that day. Maybe in the future, but not, not, not that day. Eventually, everybody gets something up their butt. <laughs> That's just how it's going to work. Whether for personal pleasure or medicinal purposes, you're going to have something up your butt at some point. Just get it over with and take it like a man. The other thing that was kind of funny but not really was my wife was so empathetic throughout the whole thing, right? She's, she's by my side. She knows how much pain I'm in. Once she realizes it's a torn muscle, all, all the feel sorry for you goes away. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, 100%. It, you know, it's I, I think I can quote her and say, well, I mean, I've given birth a couple of times like you should be able to handle this. Yeah, uh, they are always playing that card. So they roll me out of the hospital in a wheelchair and it was it was not cold, but it wasn't warm and I was wearing shorts and stuff. And I'm sitting there on the curb waiting for my wife to come pick me up. And she pulls like 20 feet away from me. Oh, and then does, doesn't get out of the car and I have to like waddle to the car. And I now am I a dick for like thinking maybe she could have just pulled right up and I could have got right in? I think you have a big issue at hand. I think you have a broader issue at hand right now. And that is is that you've hurt yourself significantly. You had to be taken to the hospital, you couldn't walk for what seems like something that shouldn't have hurt you at all. And now all your family members think it's your weak. She's testing you. <laughs> because this is going to determine whether or not you're going to stay married for the rest of your life. She is testing oh, you, which she should be doing, 
Because right now you look like somebody that's not fit to continue to care for children. If you're going to hurt yourself picking up two and a half pounds of dog poop, quite frankly, if my wife, if I was in a similar situation and my wife divorced me right afterwards, I would understand. Like you're not signaling that you are evolution's finest. I will say this. I did enough beating myself up uh, for sure. (laughs) I'm sure you've done Um, that many times. Yes. Uh, (laughs) Well, you know, I've... uh, well, no one cares. But if you've ever torn a muscle, it's it's almost like if you fracture a bone, like you just want to break it. That way, you know, like because the tear just sucks, man. Toughen up, man. That's basically what it all comes down to is you're soft. <laughs> well, trust me, I've every time I looked my father in law in the eyes as he's you know oh, doing God, things so around the house. Oh, and then he's going to be talking to your wife like, oh, so John hurt his back. Yeah. What was he doing? Oh, he's just picking up. Didn't weigh that much. God, you have so, to. You have to re. What are you gonna do to reestablish dominance? What are you gonna do to show your father-in-law and your wife and your children that you're not an embarrassment? <laughs> that you are the man of the house, so to speak. Like, how are you? What are you gonna do? You have to start doing feats of strength in the backyard. I I feel like I'm gonna have to just take an axe to a random tree. Or oh, go man. find a squirrel and, and present it to my wife or something. You know, like something Squir- wildernessy. Squirrel's not going to do it. It's got to be like a coyote. It's oh, got to be bigger. Have, Squirrel's not going to do it. You got to be, it, it's got to be bigger. We have deer. That. What if I come like riding through the neighborhood on a, on a deer's back? You need to have the deer hoisted on your own back. That's the only way. You need to kill a deer I- and then put it on your shoulders and walk into the house and then throw it down. And then say, dinner's here. That's the only way to reestablish the fact that that's the only way. That's the only thing that you can do. You have no choice. How long do I get to? How? how what's the the window? The time window for me to do this before I lose my credibility? One oh, okay. maybe end of this month. Honestly, probably. <laughs> oh man. Well, we'll see. Maybe. I mean, trust me. That gave me enough painkillers and other medicine that. Maybe I can. Maybe I can do that one night. You're gonna have to do something, man. You can't let this. You can't let this slide. You can't. <laughs> you can't. Okay, I had another question, but I think that this was just much better and more interesting. Would okay? Here's my other question related to that. Where would you say on your body is the worst place to have a minorish but nagging injury? I mean, the obvious answer after doing it now is my back. But say that I don't. I don't. I don't know that pain. Uh, or that the back is negated for me. I will say uh, small but annoying pain. You know, probably somewhere like in your foot or your toes. Oh, I could see that a little bit. My my answer would would have been neck. I feel like if you've got a little bit of thing in your neck or that shoulder area, that like that's going to bother you no matter what you do. I feel like you can get around a back injury if it's minor a little bit. Hmm. But neck I just, I is like, like no matter what you do. I feel like feet are just gonna be they're gonna it's gonna be nagging. Like it's just gonna be bad. Yeah, but you can just sit down. Neck even <laughs> sitting down, like you can't mine my, my votes for neck. Uh I asked the audience, we'll see if we get any answers by the end of this. Uh but let's move on. Let's let's All right, let's give some shout outs. Uh let's see, we'll start with Mitch Suzuki, Joseph Chedlek, Michael Hedge, Guy Seeley. Greg, Tony, two first names there. Uh, Matthew Wiseman, Vontrell Johnson, J.J. Harper, Dylan Congdon, Alex Washington, and we'll end here on, uh, let's see, Mark Oliver, Sugar Bear 9105. What a, what al- a handle. I'm always slightly fascinated by whenever you have that kind of juxtaposition of a very normal name and then a name that sounds a very certain ethnicity like Mitch Suzuki, (laughs) right? Like, my name is Bob Kawasaki. Like, those two things go together that well? Got Got some local feedback that apparently people thought my segment last week with you was funny. Oh, okay, okay. Profoundly pointless variation of, you know, Mary fuck kill uh so i kept it the same this week you know can always change it next week if it gets stale but uh this week it's a little different i went with all fictional how are you gonna say i kept it the same and then immediately say you changed it 
It's a little variant. You'll just let me finish a sentence. Okay. All right. Okay. I went with uh, all fictional characters. Ooh, okay. Okay. And the three options this week are you have to fight one of them. You have to share a hospital room with one of them where you cannot get out of the hospital bed. Oh, this is worse. And okay. the third is you have to give one of them a foot rub. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. All, all right. right. So uh, we'll start with probably the easiest pairing here. Uh, Gollum, Michael Myers, or Ed Cullen from Twilight. I already forgot what the options are. What are the options again? Fight one of them, share a hospital room, or give one of them a foot rub. Well, I'm going to share a hospital room with Gollum because he's leaving, right? If he can escape from Mordor in Lord of the Rings, he's not going to be in my hospital room for very long. So he's out. Edward Fair Cullen enough. is the guy from Twilight, right? Mm-hmm. Well, he's a vampire, so you're going to lose that fight. I'll give Michael Myers a foot rub in the hopes that maybe, you know, he'll see the light. He could change. Because if I remember correctly, he's not like a bad guy, right? Like maybe he's just misunderstood. Everybody just wants to be heard. I think you could reach Michael. You clearly have never seen the movies, which makes this I've even never better. seen it. I've never seen it at but. all, but I'm not going to fight a vampire. You're going to lose that a thousand percent. There's no way you're being would, a vampire. Michael Myers I'd, has lost several times. I'd fight Edward Cullen. I don't know why, but he just looks like he has a punchable face. Yeah, but he's a vampire. You're going to lose. Yeah. So I yeah. guess I would give the vampire a foot rub, and then I would fight Michael Myers. He's been I mean, beat either before. Way, it can be done. I mean, Buster Rhymes beat him, so you have a shot. Man, Buster Rhymes is still going, right? Like, that's, that's one of the best rap. That's one of the best Nick. That's one of the best artist names of all time. Buster Rhymes. What's he doing? I mean, like, what, what, what is he doing? Everybody knows exactly what Buster Rhymes is doing. I just Ludacris could be that, anything. That we were so old that people like, or artists like that are now going on tour and they sell out because we go and see them. I wouldn't go see any artists from my youth. Like, why would I go see that? I don't understand that. To me, that's like, why would I go see somebody new? I would just, like... Nostalgia. Nostalgic reasons. It's just a reminder of how old you are. <laughs> like, let's go see the Rolling Stones. At what, the concert uh... starts at 4 p.m.? <laughs> that's true, that's... though. They, they should start at 4 p.m. Last call at like 6.45. <laughs> right. Like, listen, guys, we're starting right at four. Right at four. And they probably get angsty and start at 3.30. The pre-band meetings at like 11.45, right after breakfast. <laughs> yeah, they want to do that. Man, they got things to do. Got doctor's appointments the next day. We got to get out of here. Okay. Okay. That's my choices. All right. Uh, second round here. Once again, it's fit, fight, fight one of them. Share a hospital room. Give one of them a foot rub. Uh, Bigfoot, Yoda, or James Bond? Oh, I'd want to share a hospital room with James Bond. Because you're going to get some good stories, and you don't know what's going to be coming in there, man. That's going to be entertainment. Like, something's <laughs> going to be happening. You have a risk of significant collateral damage, but I'd still be like, uh, right? I could go either way. Okay, all right. So, foot rub. Yoda, I feel like he deserves it. <laughs> so Plus you're going to fight Bigfoot? Oh, I'm not going to fight Yoda. I mean. He's, he's going he's gonna to crush you. Well, no, you fight Yoda, actually, because he's probably, like, he's too nice. And he'd probably yeah. just, like, use the force and put you aside. Like, I don't think he's going to kill you. Bigfoot's going to rip your arms off. So I would give Bigfoot a yeah. foot rub. Bigfoot ain't fucking around. No. Uh, I have big feet, too. <laughs> All right. The uh, last round here. Um, Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games. Wonder Woman. Daenerys Targaryen. Oh, man. Share a hospital room. I mean, all three are fine in all three. I'm fine with all three options for all three. 
Except I mean, for maybe Katniss Everdeen, I don't really have that much of a desire to give a foot rub to. I don't really have a desire to give a foot rub to anybody. We've done this on the top five. One of the things that I really don't like is having my feet touched or touching other people's feet. I just have no desire to do that. But all three are fine for all three. Because I'm losing to all three in a fight. I don't know. I'm, I Well, I'm, I guess Daenerys Targaryen would have a dragon, so. Yeah. Yeah, all three are fine for all three with me. That's that's I just rolled the dice and I'm okay with whatever the outcome is. All right, well, that's that's well, it. That was fast. That's, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, you crushed it, man. You killed yeah. it. Succinct answers, right? I'm trying to keep it focused because I know your back is going to collapse because you're a weak man. <laughs> what what you did have that to, happen? What if I just have, fell off the chair? Well, then you're did did somebody did you cry? Did you cry at all? Even a little mm. tear to yourself, even a frustration cry, like "God dang it!" On the way, on the way uh, to the hospital, yes, I probably did um, shed shed one or two, but uh, I was just so uncomfortable sitting in the passenger seat. Uh, you know, yeah. You can't cry in front of your wife in the passenger seat, dude. Back seat, okay. I mean, w- once again, it wasn't like a full on cry. You know, it might have been. Like one or two that rolled down the cheek. It wasn't like I was sobbing. I was in pain. Not af- yeah. I'm not afraid to shed a tear if I'm in pain. I'm afraid to. Sh- I'm okay of crying emotionally, but I'm not going to cry physically. Not in front of my wife. You've got to redeem right, yourself. Well. You're gonna. It's gonna have to be an elk. Deer's not even gonna cut it. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to kill an elk. Well, we don't have any elk Find one. down this way. Find F- one. Find one and make it happen. Go to the zoo and just kill the zoo, right? Like this is probably not the best. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Results of our poll, man, you got crushed. A hundred percent of people are saying neck. Hundred percent say neck. That's crazy. It's a hundred percent. We'll see. We'll check in one more time before the end of the episode. I don't know. That's 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 neck is a big pain in the ass. Back, you can, yeah, like, I could agree with that, because you can't, like, turn or anything. Uh, So anyway, but our top five is top five best-looking foods. Not necessarily the best tasting, just that you look at and, like, man, that looks good. Mm. What's your number five? Like a good yogurt parfait. Yogurt, oh, is that what your number five is? Yeah. I, I agree with you. I love the way a yogurt parfait looks. They look delicious. Oh, good yeah. choice. Yeah, that's I, I've thought I thought about this list for a few minutes, and this they always look especially if there's some fruit on them or like uh, this is just so good. So yes, yogurt just, parfaits because it looks like healthy, like a <laughs> lot of food, and it looks filling. Yogurt parfait. That's yeah. Okay. Oh, that makes me that makes me question my top five, honestly, because you started strong. Okay. Lasagna. I think lasagna is the best looking Italian food. Like it just looks good. Uh if you see the uh, side if you see it from the sides, maybe not in the pan necessarily, but when it's on a plate and you can see all of it. Okay. That's when I think yeah. lasagna is like, oh, that looks good. Ladies. All right. I mean, it's fine. It's a pretty average thing to me, but it's fine. Okay. So my my number four, uh, I went I went I went with salad specifically, but like a good looking salad, one that has like walnuts and cranberries in it, maybe some goat cheese, and it's just all done up nice. Like a good looking salad will make you think it's good. Uh, even though it may not be. I can understand that you can class up a salad, but I would never just be like, ooh, that salad looks good. Oh, man. Or or like if you're like at a restaurant, you're like, I mean, haven't you ever been perusing a menu and you're like, oh, that Cobb salad looks pretty good? No. No. Well, I have gotten a salad in order to kind of offset the other shame that I'm about to feel for the other things that I'm going to eat. But I've never <laughs> looked at a salad and been like, yeah, give me that. Yeah, I mean, a good-looking salad can be pretty good. Fruit salad, maybe. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, my number... F- Man, there's just so many that I had a really hard time picking, honestly. So I tried to do a little bit different categories. My number four is any kind of stir-fried rice. 
okay. I mean, uh, that's kind of like lasagna to me. Like, it's pretty easy to make it look good and look, you know, I, I don't know. Just, I don't know. I just like a lot of stuff that looks like a lot of stuff. There's a bunch <laughs> of different things in there. It looks kind of healthy, but also like it's going to be really good. That's why I would put stir fried rice as my number four. Any kind of thing like that. So my number three, I want my my top three are, are are virtually interchangeable. We'll say that, but I had to rank them three to one, obviously. So my number three, I went with sushi. Okay, okay, sushi definitely. Yeah, there's some sushi that doesn't look great, but 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 almost sushi always is like, oh yeah, oh like you start watering at the mouth, makes me want to go carry an elk home, like. Oh, now, but wait, especially sushi with sauce on it. Sauce and that look, like the crust stuff. Yeah, yep. My, my number three is pizza, but it has to be, a th- the only reason I don't have pizza higher is it's got to be a thicker pizza. A thin pizza doesn't look at appetizing to me. I mean, it does, but like it's got to be a little thickness to it, and then pizza to me is number three. Like, yeah, pizza. What's, well, you know, that's on my honorable mention uh for sure um but yeah once again just i feel like pizza always looks good but i'm always like oh yeah the pizza looks good never like oh i can't wait to dig into that thing it just looks so beautiful you gotta get like meatier pizza man do you go thin crust medium thick i used to go deep dish (laughs) detroit original i think along with chicago uh, but no, it's not, dude. Detroit does not I, get credit for every single thing in the world. You always try to talk up Detroit like it's done all this stuff. Nobody knows anything about Detroit food. I can't name fine. you a single Detroit food. Like, oh yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fine. You know, you know what I you know what I learned the other day actually a uh, business that started in Seattle, Washington that I you would never have guessed it. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it could be anything. <laughs> dum dum dum. <laughs> Red Robin. Yum. Yeah, there's places in the United States that I would say are famous for certain kinds of foods, like Texas barbecue or New England clam chowder or Detroit style pizza. Yeah, nobody's ever heard of that. Right? <laughs> All like right, well, Denver style pizza. Nope. Nobody's ever heard of it. Okay. I mean, listen, I'm that's just saying, that's, that's step fine, up your man. food game, Detroit. <laughs> yes, all the city of Detroit. We're going to host the NFL draft the day after this episode comes out. We'll see what happens. Oh, the Lions are going to be good, too, aren't they? The Super Bowl favorites, I think. At least, I don't want to say that. I don't want to jinx anything, but, you know, they're definitely favorites. Are they? Not the current <laughs> champion? Not the current <laughs> team? It's like, okay, see, this is what I mean about your op. Your, unabashed love for Detroit. Even though you don't live there and you moved out and hurt your back. <laughs> if, you hurt in, back. if you were in Detroit property, you would have been left to die like a man would... you should be. You should have crawled. That's what you should have done. That was how you would gain your manliness. I hurt my back, but I'm going to finish the job and then crawl to the hospital. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, anyways, my number two, uh, I went with like a, a good looking hamburger. Like sometimes a way a hamburger can be presented is it, it just it just is beautiful. Just a gorgeous. Quick clarification question. Are you now then cheeseburger's not your number one then, right? No, I mean my, my number two could be cheeseburger, hamburger. I mean it's a I guess okay. cheeseburger is my number two then officially. Because nobody okay. eats a hamburger. My son needs a hamburger and he's seven and I'm kinda like, ah, you don't want cheese on that? Why would he's you not? Alien. I don't, I don't understand. Whenever there's an option to add cheese, as long as it's not like a bodily issue, like you're lactose <laughs> intolerant, then I would add cheese to anything. Is there anything you wouldn't put cheese on? I mean, other than like the things that are so out, outrageous, but I mean, I'd put cheese on just about anything to at least try it. Sure. Would you put cheese on sushi? Yeah, why not? I mean, it wouldn't taste very good, but sure. I mean, well, no, wait a minute. There's cream cheese in some sushi. Oh, there is cream cheese. I don't know if I would put like a slice of American on top of one, but I would have cheese with sushi. Yeah, for sure. 
Shushi? Every time I say it, it sounds like sushi. There's no, shushi? there's, okay, anyway. Uh, my number two is a chili cheese dog. See, I almost went hot dog on my list, and it's thought on my honorable it? mention. I thought about it. I thought of the only, that's the only thing to me is, and I could expand chili cheese dog to also include like any kind of covered dog. Anything with like extra stuff on a hot dog looks amazing to me. It does, man. See, that's why there's so many. I mean, just a regular hot dog with the with it sweating a little bit and the bun. Even that's kind of kind of sexy. You want to do some hot meat jokes? <laughs> no. Uh, so my number one. Speaking of meat, uh, I put like a like a nice piece of meat, like a steak. Or something like that. But uh, yeah, so my number one overall is just meat. I have started watching like cooking shows. I'm not not cooking shows, but like you can go on YouTube and you can find like a Japanese chef preparing like Wagyu beef or whatever it is. And like, oh, that does look pretty good. Yeah. Okay. My number one is a cheeseburger. I don't think anything looks better than a cheeseburger. Like that just looks so good. Yeah, I mean I I don't disagree with you. I mean it was my number 2 for a reason. I mean it's it's all in the way it's presented, right? But I feel like we don't take time to really care about the way our food looks sometimes. Yeah, I would agree with that. What's on your honorable mention? Uh so I, like I said the 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 main two that I'll bring up are pizza and hot dogs. I mean, those I wanted to put them on the list, but I, I just I just didn't. Okay. Um, I've got nachos, waffles. I think waffles look great. Probably the best looking breakfast food. Eggs can look really good, but waffles, I think, are the one of the, are better looking as a breakfast food. I can put bacon up there. Mac and cheese. Those are, but they're just all like kind of plain foods, I guess, if that makes any sense. I don't know. Ooh. Okay. All right. I guess <laughs> we're going to take that shot. I'm glad you hurt your back. 